Um, I'm Callie. This is CJ. Um, basically, I started just probably like everybody else in a regular, I call it a regular Baptist church. Um, grew up there, did everything Sunday, Wednesday, any other time we were supposed to be there. Sometimes I was drugged, but I was there. Um, really, we started kind of getting into Hebrew roots when I was in third grade. So it's kind of, I'm kind of the child that was always, I guess, doing the biblical feast. So for me, it probably wasn't as hard for me as my brothers. They were older. It was probably not, it's not as cool to start in high school as it probably is as you're in third grade. So, um, but I've kind of um, always, it's always been a struggle. Probably going to cry. God, I Okay, um, it's hard as a child growing up with other people not understanding, um, and it wasn't it wasn't necessarily a friend thing. I, I needed friends. It was I wasn't gonna find someone to marry, and I knew I just I wrote it off. I wasn't it wasn't in the cards for me. I dated a lot of crumbs because of it, and. But I ended up with an okay one, so. <laughs> um, but really, I wanted to talk about, um, in, like, maybe um, my sophomore year of college, I was diagnosed with a heart condition. And um, I didn't really understand, I guess, why I had this heart condition. And I, I made it a physical thing. It was a physical thing, and... They put in a pacemaker, and that was just going to fix it, and that's fine. And what I learned was, because it wasn't a fix. I, I still had a lot of problems, and it wasn't fixed. So I thought. And as time has gone by, and it's something I, I don't talk about because I don't like to talk about, but um, I learned it wasn't a physical thing. And God was trying to teach me something greater. And I'm, I have... A hard head, probably as hard as that pole right there, and I had to keep going in circles, and I'm still going in circles, um, trying to understand what God wants me to know. Um, I don't trust God. I I keep um, making it a I can do it myself. I don't need you. I can do this. Um, part of my name is Anne, and I've learned that. Part of my name is Mercy, Grace, and you are the favored one. And I'm here because I'm favored. And I'm grateful to be here. And I'm, I'm grateful to have a promise of a husband and a family that I didn't think that I would have. And I couldn't do it by myself. And I'm grateful that even though I told God, just like Sarah laughed, I have laughed at God and I have mocked God until I'm on my face. And why he keeps blessing me, I don't know. But I'm grateful that I have this place. I have people who I didn't get to grow up with. But y'all are here, and, and it's a good feeling. It's a good place. And y'all are um, more of a blessing than you'll ever know. And I'm grateful that I have um, a place that I can raise my children and that they can understand from the very start of life. Because... It is much harder, I think, to walk this, probably starting at 60, 70, um, even in third grade. It's, it's confusing in your heart. And I'm, I'm grateful that my children can have a pure heart because of y'all and because of your support. And, and so we thank you that, that y'all are here. So. Well, maybe I should have gone first. <laughs> oh, my name is CJ, and uh, grew up around Fort Worth in a town called Midlothian. Just family. We started off in a, just a regular, normal Baptist church, and uh, maybe I guess when I was about 10 or so, we started going to a cowboy church, and up till about two years ago, that's what I was doing, was just going to a cowboy church, and, and uh, I won't get too deeply in what goes on there, but it's just... 
Um, I guess it was two years ago. I graduated TCU College, and I was trying to figure out where I was going to move and what kind of career I was going to start. And for some reason, I took a job in Dalhart, Texas. Didn't have family there, friends. Just that's where I needed to be, and and uh, my family just couldn't understand why I moved eight hours away, and and uh, I didn't really have a good answer for them at the time. But while I was up here in Panhandle, I met my wife Callie, and um, we ended up getting married, and we were blessed with each other and a beautiful baby girl, and um, that's the reason I came up here is for them and this church it's a uh, it's been a struggle a little bit but I, I know this is the right way to do things and the place to raise my family and my kids to be involved with everyone up here and, and um, I'm just thankful for for being here I mean I really am um, I don't really know else what to say, but I'm uh, I'm just thankful. <laughs> I'm, no, <laughs> no, I'm just I'm really thankful for y'all and thankful that we're able to be here and and um, I look forward to the upcoming years spending with y'all. Can you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'll just start out by telling you I was not raised in a Christian family like a lot of you were. I um, was witness to when I was a senior in high school by one of my best friends. She had been raised in a Christian home, but she um, was like a lot of you and like Callie, she really didn't want anything to do with it. And so when she came back to the Lord, she invited me to go to church with her and I gave my heart to the Lord. And uh, from then on out, I was, I just couldn't read enough. I couldn't get enough. I just was so hungry. I was just like an old dry sponge. I just absorbed it. And, and um, so then I married, I met Jim, and, and he came to the Lord because when I dated, I wanted a Christian man, and I wouldn't, um, the big thing in our little town was to go, to the show on Sunday night with your date. And so I would tell him, well, I go to church now, so if you want to come with me, you're welcome to come with me to church. And and so he did um, a few times. And, and one night I was at the altar praying, and my pastor tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, what's the name of that young man that came with you? And I couldn't even remember. <laughs> 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 I, I had to turn around and look and see who it was, and so it was Jim. And he gave his heart to the Lord, and we got married a year or so later. And uh, over the course of the years, we had four children. Um, we moved to Chicago, and he was in retail with Sears and Roebuck there. He was a manager for them. And it was kind of exciting to be there. And I fell in love with the city coming from that little tiny hometown. I didn't know if I'd like Chicago or not. I fell in love with that city and I had a hard time leaving it. But it was, it was fun because uh, there had never been a mall in the United States. And we got to open the first large mall under one roof in the United States and with Sears and Roebuck and that was just kind of fun and, and uh, he enjoyed that and, and he was just in retail all those years and um, so then uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of what brought us here because I'd have you here all night but um, we ended up in Amarillo and that move for me um, was really hard. I was glad to come to Amarillo. I hated the farm. That's where we were at that time. And um, But the hard thing for me was I still had two boys in high school and they joined a gang and got into drugs and in trouble with the police and those were really tumultuous years for me. It was really hard. It was hard to go down to the police station and pick up your kid. And, and uh, I'm happy to tell you though God is so faithful, and they're both drug-free today. One of them is serving the Lord. 
Yes. Um, uh, he's very committed and dedicated and is very active in his church. And the other one is still, I call him my little heathen, because <laughs> he is. But um, I just love him, and he, someday he's going to bow. His knee will bow to the Lord. Anyway, God is really, really faithful. My little heathen gave me a, a child, a grandchild out of wedlock. That was really hard for me, so against the values and the values that I had taught him. And I do not know how one born in sin can wrap around your heart. But that little girl has been the joy of my life. <laughs> and she went to a Christian camp this summer, and she come back so on fire for the Lord. I'm just so excited of what God's doing in her life. She has over. It's pretty hard, though, living between two parents that neither one of them are saved and walking with the Lord. But anyway, I just think that's just God's grace. God's grace. How amazing. Anyway, um, he is so faithful. And then recently, as Alvin told you, my husband passed away. And I got to wipe these tears. And one of the things that I had no idea of knowing is when we were in the emergency room, the nurse came in and she said, I'm waiting to hear from the judge to see whether or not an autopsy will be ordered. And so I thought, wow, okay, if, you don't know, if she doesn't order it, I wonder if I can, because I wanted to know why he died, because as far as we knew, he didn't have any health problems. And he was on no medication and was as active as active can be outside of, I thought he was a little more tired than he used to be. I just kind of chalked it up to age. Um, but little did I know that I found two life insurance policies I did not know I had, and the one of them required an autopsy. The judge did order an autopsy, and he died of a major cardiac arrest. And um, so I needed that autopsy, and the Lord knew that. So by e even though it's a very difficult time for me, um, the, I, the Lord's hand was with me every day, every step of the way. And uh, anyway. Um, and then he had wanted to be buried in Kansas with his family. And um, when he went back to his um, uh, 55th uh, class reunion in May, I said to him, if you want to be buried there, you better buy some lots there for us so we'll have a place to be buried. And he didn't do it. And so when I called my son and I said, would you call them? and see if there's any lots near where his dad is buried. Back when we were like 23 years old and um, barely had a dime to rub together and call our own, uh, his uncle died and we came home to the funeral and he, his, there was no other family members besides Jim and his mother's side of the family was going to let the county bury him and Jim said, no, you're not, I'll, I'll pay that. And so they worked out, we made a payment plan with them and we made those payments. And I didn't know it, but we, in that arrangement, you can't buy just one lot in a cemetery, at least not in that little town. And you have to buy them in lots of five or lots of three. So I had, we had cemetery plots there paid for that we didn't even know. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know I had, he might have known, but I didn't know. So anyway, that was a blessing to know that, that we, we, his heart's desire could be fulfilled. And uh, then um, those are the two, the two things. And then today, today, I've been dealing with furnace problems. I'm going to have to have uh, a new heating and air conditioner system. And I know up from down about that. And so I been having guys come in and, and talking to me about it and giving me bids and the one little person that he's been servicing us for years with our furnace and air conditioning is just not giving me the service. I mean he was like just not answering my calls. He wouldn't, he'd he say he would come and he wouldn't come and after he's done this like three or four times I decided enough of you. So I called another guy and he came out and 
he can sell me the same unit, but because his agency has bothered to be certified with the state or whoever you're certified with, I get a rebate back. <laughs> a $1,400 rebate. And XL will give me a $500 rebate, <laughs> which the other guy, they're not certified. They haven't bothered to do the paperwork because I imagine it'll take them a half a day to fill it out. That's not fun. So anyway, I, I just, I'm waiting to get his bid on that, but I just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord because, uh, you know, I got fed up with this other little person and so I went to another guy and look what God did for me because, yeah, so I'm very thankful. And then spiritually, oh, two, I don't know if it's been two or three weeks ago, John, you, um, on Wednesday night, you taught about being God's hand extended and that we should pray for people and that we should allow God to use us in miracles and healings and and that was so exciting to me because that was the atmosphere that I was born again into in our little church where I was back in my hometown where I was saved and so that was so exciting to me so that was such a blessing and then last Sunday I'm sitting in church and the the um, praise and worship team are singing songs about the holiness of God and I've always believed God is so holy and he you know I've known that but somehow when they were singing and the presence of the Lord was there I just sat down and just wept because somehow he's just I just saw him as more holy than I've ever seen him I think it got from here to here finally and so that's and then I just want to thank everybody you've been so wonderful to me I cannot tell you what it means to have a church family that you know if you need to you can turn to them when when you need to when you have a need you've all been so supportive and so loving and so kind and I so appreciate it thank you all So I wrote a bunch of stuff down so I wouldn't forget, <laughs> but actually more to keep me on track because if I sang of our Lord's mercies in my life, we would be here forever. And so I kept wrote down so I would stay on track more. My early life was pretty typical for a Nebraska girl. I'm a Husker fan. Every Wednesday I rode the joy bus to church. Sundays I went to church. Although I didn't totally grasp salvation, I received the salvation message at a Billy Graham movie at a community theater. I went up, I did the altar call. I was baptized in the Republican River. Probably explains my political views a little bit. <laughs> but as I look back, it seems like a lot of significant events in my life were related to the mountains. And so tonight, Donovan Do mm, talking about the mountains and the divine appointment we have on the mountain. I was like, wow, Lord, you, you're amazing. And I'm not as brave as Callie, I'm already crying. <laughs> a lot of our family vacations were to Colorado. That Billy Graham movie was about mountain climbers. And, it and they talked about the salvation message. If you fell over the edge, are you saved? Right? And so for a 10-year-old girl, whoa, <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever been on top of a mountain and looked out at the world below? What did you see? What did you feel? Did you feel anxious about high, how, how high up you were and what might happen if you slipped and fell? I've been on top of a mountain and I've looked out. I could feel the cool breeze gently blowing through my hair, softly kissing my face. I felt great joy and amazement as I looked at the world below that our Heavenly Father created. My heart raced at the thought of how hard the fall would be if I fell over the edge to the shadowy valley below. How would I survive? Do you know what else I noticed though? I noticed that that mountain that I was standing on was not the only mountain. There are several mountains and they're each beautiful. None of them look totally alike, but they're each beautiful. I've been at the top of the mountain in life. 
and I've found, fallen into the dark valley below. This is the story of Adonai taking me to the mountaintop, my fall to the valley, and his carrying me top to the top of a different mountain. In March 2002, I was on top of the world. My life was perfect. I was married to the love of my life, Gregory Chapman. I had the most amazing son, Kate Patrick Chapman, and was six months pregnant with my beautiful daughter, Peyton Faith Chapman. Things couldn't get much better. We were living the dream. I met Greg when we were in college at the University of Nebraska. Of course, right? <laughs> Our relationship was the kind that every little girl dreamed of having. He was my Prince Charming, my strong man, my best friend, my leader. I knew that Greg and I would be together forever. In the summer of 1996, about six months after Greg and I were married, Greg had a head injury. We went to the small town. We were down in Houston, living with my parents right after we graduated. Went to the small town hospital. They let Greg out after two days. And then they called us once they got his MRI results back. And they told us to get down to the trauma hospital in downtown Houston immediately. We went down there. Um, Mom's boss drove us down and went straight into the emergency department and got a room. That in itself is a miracle, <laughs> let me tell you. The emergency room doctor walked into the room, looked at Greg sitting there, walked back out. He thought he had the wrong room. Brought the MRI results back in, did some quick neuro neurological tech checks on Greg, walked out and got the neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeon came in, looked at Greg, did the same checks over and said, you should be dead. You should not be sitting here. Best case scenario, you should be in a coma. But I can't admit you. Go home. It was a miracle that he was alive that day. Greg led me on countless adventures, always encouraging me when I was afraid. We went camping a lot, like real camping, not yuppie camping like I do now. In the middle of winter, we would camp, and one time he carried me on his shoulders across a river so I wouldn't get cold and wet. We took Cade camping in the mountains when he was just six weeks old. Cade was such a daddy's boy. He, was doing, he did everything with dad. One of the most memorable adventures Greg took me on was two weeks after we moved to Colorado. We went camping at Rocky Mountain National Park. Greg woke up in the morning and decided we should go for a short hike. We ran into a group on a full day hike, so that short hike ended up being an all day hike. We decided to hike up to a beautiful mountain lake. Had I known the difficult path we would face, I would have chosen a different path. I would not have made that journey. We came to an ice bridge, which is exactly like the name applies. It's on the sheer side of a mountain. It was straight up and straight down. The path was about six inches wide. So only one person could go at a time. You would have spotters on either end, and you would literally go like this, because the sun was shining on the side of the mountain, and sheets of ice would fall down. So the spotters on the end would yell, cover, and you would cover, so you wouldn't get hit with ice. I was terrified. I wanted to turn back and not continue the journey. It wasn't worth it. Greg sat beside me put his arm around me, looked into my eyes, and said, I know you're scared. We can't do this together. You are going to have to do this by yourself. I'll go before you and watch out for you. You have to do this. It will be so beautiful once the journey is complete. He crossed first and I followed on the path after him. He did as he promised, watched out and called out over me. When we arrived at the lake, it was indescribable. I've never seen such awesome beauty. The sun shone off the clear blue water. I'm not sure which was more brilliant blue, the lake or the sky. Of course, after I arrived, I could see that Greg had been right. The destination was worth the difficult journey. March 15th, 2002, a date I will never forget. 
started out a typical Friday. I had planned to take the day off of work so Greg and I could get ready for Cade's birthday. He was going to be three on March 19th, and we were going to have a big Buzz Lightyear party for his third birthday on that sat the Sunday. One of my coworkers asked me to trade days with her because she was going to a trip to the mountains. So I had Wednesday off instead of that Friday. So I got up that morning and went to work. Before I left for work, like I said, Cade was such a daddy's boy. I mean, he was, he was always with dad. Before I got, went to work that morning, Gabe woke up, which was really unusual. He slept great. And he yelled from upstairs, Mom, I need you. So I stopped, gave him a big hug and kiss, and told him it was okay. That I'd see him after work. I was on that mountaintop and came crashing down to the valley. Greg and Cade were in an accident and didn't make it. I will never forget those words. There had to be some kind of mistake. This couldn't have happened. My whole world came crashing down. They were my whole life. I couldn't make it without them. I didn't want to try to make it without them. I was supposed to be with them that day. God, why was I not with them? Do you really know what it's like to walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I don't know if I really do or not. But I do know what it's like to feel afraid, lonely, and heartbroken. I had many people tell me that the Lord will never give us anything more than we can bear. I disagree. He will never give us more than he can carry for us. We just have to allow him to carry us and our burden to that higher place. I alone would have never made it through my devastation of losing the love of my life and my wonderful baby boy. In Jeremiah 29, 11, Yahweh assured the people of Israel that he knew the plans he had for them, plans to prosper them, not to harm them. His assurance still stands for us today. Even when we cannot imagine being delivered from the valley that we have been cast into, God has great plans for our life. His promises abound for us. He told Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And forsake means he will never abandon us. Even when we feel abandoned, our Father is there for us. We might never understand why we are on the path we are on, but we stand firm in the promises of Yahweh. One of my first recollections after the accident was of that magnificent mountain hike in Greg's words, I will go first and watch out for you. It will be so beautiful once we get through this journey. On May 27, 2002, I gave birth to a strong, beautiful baby girl, Peyton Faith Chapman, and I knew why I wasn't in the car accident that day. Yahweh blessed me more than I can ever explain. Peyton gives me an immeasurable amount of joy in place of my mourning. Adonai has given Peyton a special purpose and has entrusted me to raise her in his ways so she may realize and fulfill her purpose. Right after Peyton was born, my Heavenly Father raised me up from the valley and carried me up the hillside. But I wasn't to the top of the mountain yet. I still struggled with grief and would slip in my upward climb. My parents were always uphill from me, grabbing hold of my hand and never letting me fall back down into that valley. Mom and Dad have always been the best earthly parents I can imagine. They have truly been an example of my Heavenly Father's love and concern for me, and I am so thankful Ed and I bless me with them. The time since losing Greg and Cade have been an incredible journey up from that valley. Very few women have been as blessed as I was in my marriage with Greg. On my way up from the valley, Ed and I brought a new love into my life. Rick is an incredible man. He's very different from Greg, but also amazing. We have a comfortable love that you can trust in. He is my provider and my protector. He is my self-proclaimed Superman. He has introduced me to fried food and four-wheeling. <laughs> 
My spiritual journey since the accident has led me to a greater relationship with Adonai. He has taken me to new heights in his word that I never dreamed existed. He is my rock and my salvation. And whom should I be afraid? I don't know if I would ever have experienced this relationship with the Lord had I not gone through the tragedy that I did. As I stand upon this mountaintop that Adonai has carried me to, I can see the mountaintop that I was once on. It is a beautiful mountaintop, just as this one is. I can look down into the valley from which Adonai carried me. I'm not so afraid of that valley anymore. As I look back at the beautiful mountain and the deep valley, I can tell you, had I known the difficult path I would face, I would have chosen a different path. Now I can see the first mountain, the valley, and this mountain that I'm now on for all their individual splendor. Okay. You know, I make it hard on myself to stand up and speak, and I apologize, but I will be reading my testimony tonight just, just to stay on track. Psalms 51, 15. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For his name's sake and for his glory, I will share with, with you tonight what God is doing in my life. A desire of my heart is to have childlike faith in God, mature childlike faith. The Lord has been showing me key words of a king, and so let's start with salvation, Yeshua. I am thankful to God, my mother and dad, grandparents, and all who influenced me to trust in the Lord. I was saved at age 12, and God had a hold of me. He gave me the desire to know him from then on. Jesus said in John 10, No one can snatch them out of my hand. Thankfulness and joy. God led me here to freedom three years ago. Thanks to God and each of you for your kindness and example and encouragement and fun. Perfect. Loving God, loving people. The Lord started my path to freedom at our previous church in Garland. I got just a light of what we have here, just a glimpse. In a women's Bible study, I was introduced to the booklet Zola Levitt's Seven Feasts of Israel. I enjoyed more of Zola's booklets and discovered the feasts in the Bible and worked with our fifth graders in Passover study and the Seder. In Amarillo, I was watching God's Learning Channel, and there was someone from Amarillo on it, Pastor Alvin and Bishop Solomon. I located freedom, and I've been here ever since. Love and faithfulness. I thank God for his love and faithfulness. My husband Garland and I have been married for 41 years. He was raised in the Wichita Falls area and I grew up in the Panhandle in Lipscomb County on a ranch. Our background is education and Garland was a basketball coach for 42 years. The la uh, we lived in only four towns, the last two being Garland, I mean being Pampa and Garland. We are blessed with two children, our son, Kobe, who still lives in Dallas, and our daughter, Brooke. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Omnipresent. God has always been with us in all places at all times. When we were expecting our second child, I will always remember the doctor telling me, you may want to consider to abort your baby. My son and I had a problem with the measles. But in my mind and heart, there was no consideration to be made. Our baby, <clears throat> I just prayed to God for all to be well with our baby, and all was well. Our baby girl, Brooke, was born, but soon we learned that Brooke had a heart problem. She had her first heart surgery within her first day of life. God held tight to our little family and helped us through each day. Brooke did great, even though she had three surgeries her first year then five more procedures by age 21. Sovereign God. Mother's Day 2002 is a special memory for us. I got a call that no one wants to get. Our daughter Brooke, age 24, who was a high school home ec teacher, had died of complications with her heart. The Lord had given us so many years together and Brooke was such a joy and delight to all. God had always gotten us through each bump in the road. What do you do when you think you are trusting God with all your heart? When you feel your faith was strong in a particular situation and you know without a doubt that with God all things are possible? 
that things don't turn out. I found that you just turn to God again and trust some more. Sovereign God. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord heals. Immersing in the word was amazing to me as God brought his peace that passeth understanding. And as we were cleaning out Brooks' things, we found lots of journaling and poems. I'd like to read Brooks' personal mission statement at age 20. Life is precious, so treat it with respect. Always look for the best in what you do, in others, and in yourself. Smile as much as possible, laugh during the bad times, and know that it will end. Look towards the future with optimism, but don't forget to live for today. Family and friends may go, but their spirit will always live on in you. Somebody is always watching you, so act the way you were brought up to act. Do not confuse what is important and what is trivial. Live for the important things. In the end, remember, life is what you make it, prayer is the best medicine, and God is your 100% non-stop love of your life forever and ever. Amen. It's so wonderful when the Spirit gives us His words of comfort and reassurance. Truth. Looking back, I regret not raising our children in the truth of the whole word. Our children were saved and baptized and in Bible study, but we didn't teach them all of God's instructions, His truth in detail, not taking anything for granted. I love seeing you parents training up your children in the whole truth from the Lord. Amen. Repentance. As Daniel said in his prayer in Daniel 9, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. I came to realize that it's not all those bad guys out there who are causing all our problems, but it is me, my sin, self-will, and pride. Repentance and obedience. Prayer. God has impressed me to really, really pray for our families. The Holy Spirit confirms to me it is in my hands. Isaiah 65, 1, in Isaiah 65, 1, the Lord said, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. Mercy and grace. Hope. Always have hope. From Psalm 71. But as for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more, even when I am old and gray. Do not forsake me, O God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who come. Amazing God. When we were in Pampa, God gave me a special life verse, Joshua 1, 9. Haven't I commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. To my amazement and thanks to Kimberly, I learned that the Torah portion of my birth date and year included Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord himself goes before you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Immutable. God does not change. Yeshua Messiah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is our banner and victory. He is fighting and winning the spiritual battles we are all waging. Our King is always victorious. Psalms 145. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. All is well. Loving God, loving people. For his name's sake and for his glory, our Father has a hold of us. Psalms 46, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. All is well. Amen.